And now, the nominees for the Pulitzer Prize in Journalism are Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, Washington Post, Daniel Shore, Village Voice, William Sapphire, New York Times, and Dina Moran, Los Angeles Sun. And the winner is... Dina Moran. Like a dream, 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 dream. Miss Moran, Miss Moran, fasten your seatbelt, please. We've begun our descent to Los Angeles. Dina Moran to see Mr. Engel. Mr. Keyes is taking Mr. Engel's appointment. Right in there. Thank you. Hey, look, Chester. Chester, will you just... Chester, will you listen to... And I am telling you, you cannot spend an entire week having Mildred debate whether to give the patient an enema or not. I mean, from where I sit, Chester, that is not high drama. Chester, I don't care how many cards and letters you get praising Mildred Monaghan, registered nurse. It is a comic strip. How fast do you type? Chester, she is not restoring America's faith in medicine. Do you take dictation? Chester, she has been involved in three malpractice suits and two murder trials, and she's the only one in that hospital who knows what she's doing? Can you type off a dictaphone? Chester, I am through arguing with you. I think either you or Mildred Monaghan need psychiatric help. One of you has an anal fixation. No, no pun intended, but she'd better get off the pot. Now, I don't know why you waste my time applying for a job you are totally unqualified for. Now, I mean, I realize it may be a lost art like basket weaving or potato mashing, but some secretaries do type, Miss... Moran? Dina Moran? I have an appointment with Mr. Engel to discuss my column. The one I'm going to write, probably in longhand. Sorry. See, we're a little disorganized around here. Uh, Barry Engel had the uh, misfortune and bad timing to have a heart attack two days ago, and everything's been dumped in my lap. Yeah. Moran. Oh, yeah. You're going to be the new gossip columnist. Yeah, come on, I'll show you your office. Hold it! Uh, wait a minute. I'm the new what? 
you're going to take over Alma Llewellyn's gossip column. There must be some mistake. I've been doing research for a political columnist. I even wrote the column while he was on vacation, by line and everything. Yeah, I read them. Grab your stuff. But my columns were about national politics. They were about that undersecretary getting blotto and sticking his hand down the front of the ambassador's wife's dress. <laughs> uh, what was that undersecretary's name? Uh... Listen, Mr. Keyes, you are not dealing with a star-studded kid who would do anything to get a byline. Oh, yeah. His name was Trumbull. I thought I was brought out here to cover the political scene in California. Politicians, actors, same thing. Why me? Well, your stuff was very splashy, so someone on high figured you might be able to spice up the gossip column. Can I leave these here? But I don't know the first thing about writing a gossip column. To start with who's sleeping with who. Who? Forget the grammar, just get the beds right. Dina Moran, Stacy Stanton. Is she my replacement? Your boss. Oh. Ah, uh, why hasn't Alma gotten her stuff out of here yet? I called her again this morning. Well, call maintenance. Have them store it or something. It's a little cluttered, but it's all yours. I don't think so. Uh, job not significant enough for you, huh? Well, let's just say I wouldn't be very good at it. Okay, okay. You're a serious journalist, and we're asking you to do crap. Well, what's the alternative? go back to Chicago and uh, continue doing research? Maybe. At least until the right opening came along. We're up to our typewriters in serious journalists. Right now, we need someone to write a gossip column. So, unless you want to sit on your aspirations for the next few years, why not take a shot at it? We'll look on the bright side. You may be fired before you decide to quit. Well... Good. Good. <laughs> uh, uh, one more thing, Miss Moran. This is not a newspaper, it's a newspaper syndicate. That means nobody goes around yelling, stop the presses, because there aren't any presses to stop. And if you call for a copy boy, you're going to be very lonely. <laughs> we work regular hours in relative sanity. Uh, adjust your sights, Miss Moran. Think trash. Chicago, please. That's area code 312-555-8273. Thank you. Yeah. Paul. Yeah. I woke you. No, no, no. I'm just resting my eyes for a minute. I'm working on a brief for the blasting case. The old man wants it in the morning. Where are you calling from? Some place called the Starland Motel. It seems everything has the word star in it out here, from motels to mortuaries. How'd it go? Terrific. It couldn't have gone better. And a column? If I only had one word to describe it, I would have to say, incredible. Yeah, I miss you. Me too. I wish you were here right now, holding me, kissing me. <laughs> I have an emergency call for Dina Moran. That's me. I'll take it. Will you please release the line? Paul, I don't know what it could be. Maybe my mother... Okay, look, hon. Call me back as soon as you can, okay? I will. Hello? Dina Moran? Yes. Sorry to break in on your call. Who is this? Marty Kaplan. Who? I have something that'll be very beneficial to both of us. Are you the one that made the emergency phone call? Well, your line was busy, and I didn't want you to make any commitments before we had a chance to talk. Who are you? Marty Kaplan. Ivan Balkan Associates. Public Relations. A press agent? Calling me in the middle of the night, scaring me half to death? It's only 9.30. Go to hell. Who is it?
I'll think about it. Room service. I didn't order room service. That's good, because this joint doesn't have room service. Come on, open up, will ya? I'm running out of light-hearted banter. You got here awful fast. I was propelled by guilt and anxiety. I also called from the phone booth down the street, just in case you were really hungry. Look, Mr. Kaplan... Marty. It's Marty to friends and enemies alike. It is late, and I am tired, and while I find you moderately amusing, I don't appreciate being bothered at home. Oh, I come bearing gifts, the kind your competitors would kill for. Like an exclusive interview with Darling Daniels. May I? But she hasn't given an interview since she did that nude layout. Well, she's just signed for her first motion picture, and she wants to talk about it. Why so generous, Mr. Kaplan? And so eager? Only a few hours in town, and already a skeptic. I like that. Shows we can work together. Darlene's married to Terry Anderson. The actor. You're being charitable, but since he's also a client, I won't quibble. Terry's series hasn't been doing all that well on the ratings lately. Time slot, or maybe the public's finally caught wise. Anyway, he needs a little positive PR. Devote your first column to Terry. And I get an exclusive with Darlene Daniels. What do you say? Deal. He's been known to make a lunge or two with pretty ladies, so try to stay out of his motorhome. I'll keep that in mind. Every day's a circus, complete with clowns. Here's someone I want you to meet. Betty! Hi, girl. Uh, Alan! Oh, well. <laughs> Betty White, Alan Ludden. Say hello to Dina Moran. Well, hello. Pleasure to meet you. Dina. Pleasure. She's a new columnist with the Roper Syndicate. Well, good to see you. Hey, we're working over in 32. Why don't you come see us? I'm working. I don't know what he's doing. OK, <laughs> we'll be over. over. Hey, Pleasure nice to meet you. Yes. Bye-bye. 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 Nice people, Betty and Alan. See the one with the red hat? Yeah. That's the lady you replaced. That's Alma Llewellyn? Yeah. They call her the Dark Lady of the Bonnets. Now you know why. What happened to her? She outlived her usefulness. Alma! Marty, darling. How you doing? How Hi, wonderful honey. to see you again. How are fine, you? Fine, fine. Say hello to Dina Moran. Alma Llewellyn. Oh. The poor thing who inherited my reading. It's a pleasure, Miss Llewellyn. I can't tell you how happy I am to be done with that boring column. Hollywood isn't what it used to be. Somehow, the stars don't seem to shine as brightly. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I resign. I can understand that. Actually, Marty, I'm invading your bailiwick, public relations. I'm in the process of building a small, select clientele. And I have so many exciting projects planned. I'd like you to have first crack at them. Oh, uh, let's have lunch together, dear. Yes, wonderful. Oh, excuse me. I'm so bored working with a German shepherd. He gives me Terry, nothing. Terry, just trust me. I'm I can't just, get into my just circle. Just relax. It'll work out fine, mm. honestly. Now, look, I want you to just Really talk to the dog, Terry. I know. Make him understand that you're both in trouble. I know. I know. Okay. All right. Uh, roll, please. All right, we're rolling. 19, take eight. Speed. Marker. Action. All right, Baron. This is a rough one. They're going to be here any minute. When they get here. Which dog is this? Uh, keep him rolling. Don't worry. It's the one that likes you. Keep going. All right, Baron. This is a rough one. They're going to be here any minute when they get here. This is not the dog that likes me. All right, cut. cut. I want that dog off my set. Will you give that dog another tranquilizer? That's a cut. I hate that dog. I hate that dog. 
<laughs> They're just kidding out there. We, we kid a lot around the set, don't we, Marty? Yeah. I kid the dog, the dog kids me. We're just one big happy family. <laughs> Say, aren't you Tina Morgan? Dina Moran. Dina Moran, of course. I wish your office would get these things straight, Marty. My fault. And have another chair for the lady, please. <clears throat> You're going to be the subject of Dina's very first column. Moi? Well, I'm very flattered. <laughs> Don't hover, Marty. You're inhibiting the lady. <clears throat> Remember the furniture. Say, listen, why don't we go to my motor home? It's a lot more comfortable there. Well, this is my first visit to a movie set, and I'd like to soak up the atmosphere. Now, Mr. Anderson. Uh, call me Terry. 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 Yes. In your series, you play a blind detective who uses disguises to catch the villain. That's right. Now, I don't quite understand that premise. If you're blind, how can you see the disguises you put on? Yeah, well, that's the writer's job. And I'll tell you, they haven't been coming up with much lately. That's why the ratings have been slipping. Television writers are overpaid, under-talented, and the most pampered people in the business. Can I get you something? Oh, no, no, thank you. Oh, that's no trouble. No, uh, you're married to Darlene Daniels, the actress. <clears throat> would, you, would you care to fix, say a few things? Excuse things? me, please. Uh, look, could we shoot this, Terry? The dog is practically unconscious. If he bites you, it'll be in his sleep. Listen, uh, when I finish this scene, we'll have lunch in my motorhome. That's the best place to get to know me, in depth. Housewarming. Oh, sweet. Ta-da! Dina Moran's Hollywood. I like that. Has a certain grandeur to it. How's the reception on this thing? For a hundred bucks, I'd be delighted with snow. Ah, your timing's impeccable. I was halfway out the door. It's the day you know that political show. column I came out here to write? Yeah, sure. Well, the unless the president is dating Liza Minnelli, he won't be in it. <laughs> I, do, I, uh, I don't understand. To the minute reports from the studios and I'm writing a gossip so column. Guessed. A gossip column? An open yeah, you know, what beautiful singer is running around with what married TV star? That's why you went to Los Angeles? Why didn't you tell me? Good afternoon. This is David Sheehan in Hollywood years. with my special guest today, Miss Darlene Daniels. Darlene, uh, before we talk about this uh, booming new career of you in uh, movie land... Paul, uh, I'll call you back. Now, the rumors I'm hearing about you and that uh, television star you're married to, Terry Anderson. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Trouble in paradise, huh? Well, let's put it this sure, way. Sure, come on, tell us. But, um, I'm come on, part tell part part us, since you won't you read are. it in my column. Well, what led you to this uh, obviously painful decision? Well, let's put it this way. Most, uh, most actors are considered children. But I swear, Terry is... He's just positively fetal. This sort of fetal? shoots the hell yeah. out of your exclusive he's interview with her, doesn't it? Boring, you mean the one I haven't had yet? <laughs> what was it that attracted you to him in the first place, if I may ask? Marty Kaplan, please. I don't know. Dina Moran. I don't know. I mean, you know... Well, when do you expect him back? We fell in love, we got Did he leave a number where he can be reached? He's kind of a, a sexy guy from... You mean he just vanished from his office without a trace? Before you knew him. Is that true? Yeah. Well, they do say that beauty's in the eye of the beholder, don't they, you know? Well, I wasn't thinking as much of beauty as I was of performance. Yeah, I look for it. I look for it very hard. In the right... <laughs> the 
this way till morning. You had no intention of giving me that exclusive on Darlene Daniel. How'd you find it? I told your answering service I was her, and it was urgent. I reached you. That's very clever. I like that. Yeah, I spent the last three hours tracking you down. Wait a minute. Down. Hold on now. You do that once more, and the Geneva rules won't apply. You lied to me deliberately. Look, it was simple. Now, mind you, I didn't say it was honorable or ethical or even nice. Just simple. You want a drink? No. Terry Anderson was screaming his head off. He hated the fact that Darlene was getting all the attention. If we didn't get him some publicity of his own, he was going to fire us. Okay, okay, but why not give me Darlene, too? I'd already given her to David Sheehan. Then why promise me something you couldn't deliver? Would you have given Terry your first column without me promising Darlene? I was in a bind, pussycat. Didn't it ever occur to you that I might be a sore loser? Sore enough to take it out on your clients? You want Darling Daniels on the cover of your magazine? We'll let you have her. But you gotta take X amount of our other clients and give them covers too. Otherwise, we'll peddle our flesh somewhere else. Will you bear one thing in mind, Marty. I may be new, but I am not slow. I only have to be shown once and then I catch on. So don't you ever do that again, because seller's market or not, I'll beat your brains out with my typewriter. Where's your press release? What? Didn't anyone give you a press release? No. How do you like that? I work my fingers to the bone so you media types will know why you're lapping up all this free booze and nobody bothers to hand it out. We're here to celebrate the fact that Buddy Harwin just signed a multi-million dollar contract. I'll be dipped. You're one of the few who actually reads the stuff we send out. Where is the guest of honor? Um, there he is, the king of bubblegum rock. Every teeny bopper's moist fantasy. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Excuse me. Buddy. Right hey, Marty. Say hello to Dina Moran. Hey, fantastic. I'm a fan. Never miss your column. Thank you. Are uh, you going to write a few words about me? That's why I'm here. Fantastic. You, uh, you know, Dina, I'd, I'd really appreciate it, though, if you kind of play down the big bucks I'm making on this thing. You know, when people start throwing around all those zeros, it kind of gets in the way of the music. You know, and that's what should be important. You know what I mean? I'll keep that in mind. Hey, I'm uh, opening at the Forum next week. Uh, we're sold out, but if you want to come, just give Marty a call. Fantastic experience. All right. Okay, we'll see you later. Fantastic talking to you, buddy. Uh, yeah, now listen, anything you want, just ask Marty. How does it feel having a kid who can buy and sell you a hundred times, fawning all over you? Very uncomfortable. Good, when you start to enjoy it, you're in serious <laughs> trouble. It's George O'Hanlon, isn't it? Yeah, she's gonna be a guest on Buddy's first TV special. Now, there's someone I'd love to meet. I've been a fan of that lady's forever. Anything you want, just ask Marty. <laughs> we'll catch up with her later. Let's get something to eat. Some Chinese food. Oh, Marty, I need you. Uh, my boss, Ivan Bach, Dina Moran. Querido. That column of yours has improved a thousand percent since you took it over. Thank you. I have to spirit him away momentito, but I promise to return him relatively uncorrupted. Mm, I'll be right back. Something wrong? I don't believe it. What? This. You know, a few years back, when gas was 20 cents a gallon, 
couple of Englishmen took a tour of this country. And when it was over, they were asked what single thing most impressed them about America. And they said, the incredible... Well, I thought they were going to say something like the incredible beauty or the incredible energy or friendliness. You know what they said? Mm. The incredible waste. Except for the price of gas, nothing much has changed. Minor crisis. Wire service boys thought they were being cheated on pictures of Buddy. Where's your plate? Hell of a host you are. I'm afraid I'm responsible for this incredible waste. I'm Marquez. Haven't you two been introduced? One of us was too busy talking to bother with the names. Mark's talent agency represents Buddy Harwin and a few hundred other heavyweights. This is his humble villa. I know the name. I just wasn't familiar enough with the face. Now, don't be embarrassed. You're right. It is overboard. And my fault. I told the caterers to make sure there was more than enough. No one can accuse them of not listening, huh? See if you can get Miss Moran to eat something. Neither one of us want all this to go to waste, do we? <laughs> Terrifico, absolutely... Terrific, oh, the evening couldn't have gone better. Thanks to the brilliant planning and the stunning execution of our host. Here, here. Here, here. You took the words right out of my mouth. He is known far and wide for his stunning execution and his brilliantly planning. Isn't that right, Marky Poo? Uh, Georgia, we both could use a little air. I want you to just go fly home. Fine. Well, go ahead and tell him. Tell him how brilliantly you executed me into that European tour. I went there singing for my supper. I came back singing for my supper. And my breakfast. And my lunch. Georgia, this little performance isn't in... I come to praise, Siga. Not to vary him. Bet you didn't think an old Irish broad from the Bronx knew Shakespeare, did you? <laughs> well, I know a lot more. So? I am here to tell the world that Mark Case is the best, first class, A number one thief. Tomorrow morning, Georgia's going to feel a lot more embarrassed <coughs> than we do right now. She's going to need a lot of understanding and help, all of you gentlemen. Please think about that on your way home, okay? I suppose you're delighted with what you just saw. Whether I like it or not, that's what my column's supposed to be about. How aware are you of what's been happening in George's career lately? I know she's been out of the country for a while. Yeah, because she couldn't get any work here. It's what's known in the trade as a tough sale. Legendary drinking bouts. Meanness to her fellow performers. A suppressed rage that's always ready to surface when she's had a few too many. All in all, she's a handful to work with. I managed to get her the European tour. Now, it's not generally known, and certainly not for publication, but I had to guarantee each night's gate with some of my own money. Sometimes as much as $350,000. Anyway, she came through with flying colors. Uh, her voice was back. The audience loved her waif-like quality. And on the strength of her success, I talked Buddy Harwin into using her on his special. Now, if you print even an allusion to the spectacle of Georgia being drunk tonight, 
Well, he's going to have an excuse to bounce her. I desperately need that job for her. She needs that kind of national exposure to bring her back. Why was she so angry at you? Well, she has to have someone to blame for each new wrinkle, each record that didn't sell, each husband who didn't last. I just happen to be handy. Next time, it'll be Ivan Bach, some unsuspecting waiter. Maybe even you, Miss Moran. What you saw was a woman trying to stay afloat with alcohol. And you don't want me to print what I saw? Well, do you honestly believe that your readers are entitled to know that Georgia O'Hanlon is an aging, frightened drunk? I mean, will that piece of information really advance the cause of responsible journalism? You know, I read some of those political columns you wrote, and I thought you had more serious ambitions. Singer throws drink in agent's face. Catchy, isn't it? Really grabs your attention. Do you know who wrote it? A wire service stringer. Mr. Keyes. Were you at that party? You know I was. I must have missed that somewhere in your column. According to it, the most exciting thing there was the cold shrimp. I didn't want to hurt Georgia O'Hanlon without knowing all the facts. Did she or did she not throw a drink in her agent's face? Yes. Well, then that's a fact. Why didn't you print it? Because she was drunk and I felt... Oh, really? Well, I didn't get that from your column. I must have missed that somewhere. Now, since when do you decide what's what's it news and what isn't? Or what's her. fair or what isn't? A reporter's job is to report, not to interpret or censor or select, just report. Ever since you came here, you've been bleating about serious journalism. Well, the truth of the matter is you can't even write what you're being paid to write. I once told you, you may be fired before you decide to quit. It was a joke then. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. But I really am in the mood for Polynesian food today, aren't you? Uh, not while I'm eating. Oh, Steve. Table in the back, please. Hi, Dina. Dina, hello. Hi. How are you? Jane Meadows, Steve Allen. I'd like you to be my secretary, Stacy Stanton. Hi, How do you do, Stacy? Nice Hi. to see you. Hello, nice hello. to meet you. <laughs> By the way, love, thanks for the great plug for my new book. Yes. Uh, Jane, I'd like to run something about you. What are you doing? Well, I think I'll go home and write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, remind me to laugh at what Jane just said with her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, dear, it's Jane with a Y. Like I was telling you, that's your problem. You're too nice. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. George O'Hanlon wants to be a star. She's got to pay the price. And getting wrapped in the papers is part of it. <sighs> I'd give everything I own to be in her shoes. Bad PR and all. You think anybody in real life is named Stacy Stanton? That's my professional name. In real life, I'm Barbara Jean Gratz from Philly. He said I couldn't even write what I was being paid to write. Who? Keys. I wasn't protecting George O'Hanlon. I was protecting myself because I was too embarrassed by what I'd have to write. <laughs> oh, who do I think I am? Pulitzer Prize. Okay, Barbara Jean Gratz from Philly. I'm gonna give Mr. Keys the best damn gossip column he ever read. Yeah, yeah. Okay, All then right, we'll yeah. take it. And then you we'll, know, up. Okay, up. but we'll go for 16, Forrest, and then around the bridge. Wait, um, wait, I'm a little confused. See how comfortable you feel on the steps. You want me to move? I want Sorry, to Pussycat, up. this is a closed rehearsal. You owe me one for Darlene Daniels. What do you want to buy with it? A few minutes with her. Let it alone. She's already given a statement. Yeah, I read it. When are she and Case going to tie the knot? Sweet on 
the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade, had those shoes on parade. But I'm not afraid. Crossover, I'm in Bill, clover. what if is I'm she fine. doing? Phil, I'm asking you a question. Who's that? You're the alleged director. What the hell is that woman supposed to be doing? Is that you, buddy? I'm coming down. Is uh, something wrong, Phil? No, 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 no. Just relax, honey. That's what I love about Buddy. He hasn't changed. He was rotten before he signed that network contract, and he's still rotten. Get Case on the phone. I want to talk to him. I want to know why you booked that woman on my special. I told him I didn't want her. My fans all think she's dead. And from what I've been seeing today, I can understand why. All right, all right. Come on, buddy. Come on. We'll go upstairs. We'll sit down. I don't we'll want to go upstairs. No, come on. We'll sit down. We'll have a I do not want to sit down. Come with me. This will be a nice Phil, thing. You... Will you trust me? Will you trust me on Just this? Listen to me. Sweetheart. Where you go? Oh, Dina, I can't let you go back there, pussycat. Come on. Marty, I am not a pussycat anymore. What do you mean he won't be back until Tuesday? I gotta talk to him now. No. No, I don't want to talk to anybody else. I want to talk to Case. Listen, I pay his salary. He works for me, not the other way around. Hey, you work for me, you little snot. Sit on it. Talk to me, buddy. That's what I'm here for. Anything you want. Just ask Marty, remember? Yeah. I want Case. He's out of town. Where? Sacramento. Sa who goes to Sacramento? It's the state capital, buddy. That's where the politicians hang out. Is he still on that kick? Bigger and better than ever. He's arranging some testimonial dinners for himself. Yeah, well, that's just great. I'm going in the toilet, and he wants to be governor. Senator. Yeah, well, I want him here, Marty. Right here, where I can look into those beady little eyes and find out why you unloaded that half-baked half-bent on me. She on the juice, that it, or pills? No, no, she's uh, just a little nervous, that's all. Nerv what do you mean? She's stumbling around down there like an acid head on a bad trip. You call that a star turn? It's the uh, first time she's put the thing on its feet. Uh, no, 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 from, from a, a technical standpoint. Hey, hey, don't give me any of your director's guild jargon. Your last three series got canceled. The only reason you're here is because the agency represents you. Listen, you asinine little twerp. I do have yeah. more stars, more real talent than you talent, talent, yeah. She sings like Harpo Marx and looks like Milton Berle in drag. How's that? Marty, I told Case, I begged him, get me Earth, Wind, and Fire, ELO, Elton John, pay them what they want. I didn't care. It'd be worth it. Buddy, you have to understand television. We just can't go after the kids. We gotta attract the older audience, too. And Georgia has a big following with them. My fans expect Your certain... fans? Your fans think the Flintstones is heavy drama. They need somebody to turn the set on for them because they don't know how to work the knobs yet. Good for Take a walk, Bill. Come on. Grab a cup of coffee. Hit on the script, girl. George O'Hanlon has more talent, get drunk, than you'll have if you live to be 90. Hey, don't stop at the coffee machine. Keep going until you reach unemployment. Hey, you want to yell at someone? Yell at me. That's what I get paid for. You're not worth yelling at. For Buddy Harwin? Oh, oh yeah, I, I remember. He was pretty rough on you out there. <laughs> the zip field of the pimple set. I always say if you, if you haven't got talent, you could at least be nice. Miss O'Hanlon, why did you call Mark Case a thief? I was in the tent. Did a name breeze by me just now? Dina Moran. I've already given a statement. I read it. Now I'd like to hear the truth. Why? If Mark Case really is a thief, don't you think the public should know? I don't think the public cares. I don't think anybody cares. 
Why is he a thief, Georgia? What do you have that he could possibly want? He's robbing me deaf, dumb, and blind. He said if I did this European tour, I could pay off my back taxes, penalties and all. <laughs> I was over there five months. I played halls that were as big as Denmark. I slept in cheap hotels to save money. I drove in 20 degree weather in a bus with no heat. I nursed every nickel. I squeezed 11 cents out of every dime. And when I came back here, he said there was nothing left. He showed me a stack of books as high as a small office building. Expenses ate up my share. We grossed two and a half million on that tour. And where is it? Where? The IRS. They took everything I own. My home, my car, my jewelry. I had two German Shepherd dogs. Pedigrees. And, and those bastards took them, too. Look, I've been in this business since I was four years old, and I worked almost every day of my life. What do I have to show for it? What? Two empty suitcases. Can't the IRS examine those books? Not unless the tax return is filed. That won't be until next year. What about the district attorney? Not unless she has some proof. He doesn't want to hear from me. My lawyer said, out of the books. But that'll take $15,000, and I don't have $15,000. And if I did, I'd give it to the IRS. Maybe I could get my dogs back. Why would a man who owns a major theatrical agency need to steal from you? That's what everybody asks. Give them any kind of an answer? I don't know how he's doing it, much less why. You're gonna be like the rest, huh? Listen to my sad story. Disappear as fast as you can. If there's any truth to this, I promise you, I will yell my head off until somebody stops and listens. Uh, that's the word, Chester. You want me to spell it for you? Unacceptable. I am killing the strip. Until you realize you cannot have Mildred Monaghan quit the hospital to become a faith healer. I don't care how many times you've been reborn, Chester. The name of the strip is Mildred Monaghan Registered Nurse. So either you get her duff back in that hospital or you find another way of making 30 grand a year. 14 surgeons standing around, picking their noses, and she cures this guy by slapping him on the forehead. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like the social director in a loony bin. Alan, I never thought I'd say this, but I think you are going to be very proud of me. Well, I am proud of you. You've really turned that column of yours into a fishmonger's delight. Well, it's going to get better or it's going to get worse, depending on how you look at it. Are you onto something hot and juicy? Well, it's too early to tell, but it smells that way. Come on, fess up. You're beginning to enjoy it, aren't you? All that power. All those celebrities getting their $500 suits dirty, bowing and scraping to you. Well, it has its moments. <laughs> Atta girl. I'll see you later. Dina, just keep it down and dirty. That's the way to get attention.
I've been staring at these for weeks, and I'm embarrassed to admit I'm getting sick of looking at my own face. I hope the voters don't feel the same way. Then you've decided to enter the primary. Well, there's more than a passing interest in my candidacy. Which one of these do you think makes the more positive statement? Now? Well, they all say something. I, I'm just not quite sure what yet. Now, do you understand the trouble I'm having? Look, uh, I've got a tennis game in about 20 minutes. Why don't we talk while I warm up, okay? I'm thinking of doing an article on George O'Hanlon. Good. Maybe you can help me a little. Anything at all. A European tour. How was the box office? Phenomenal. Yes, I hear it grows somewhere between two and three million. Now, don't be coy, Miss Moran. I know you've been with Georgia. <laughs> Do you also know what we talked about? Well, I can imagine how I robbed the poor woman blind. Deaf, dumb, and blind. She always had a sense of the outrageous. I'll say that for her. Would you, uh, when I get over there? Why didn't the tour make any money? Was it simple mismanagement or something more complex? The purpose of the tour was to reestablish George O'Hanlon as a major attraction. And in that, it succeeded. That doesn't explain what happened to the money. Well, among other things, to get bookings, I had to give away more of the gross than I would have preferred. I suppose that's all documented in the financial records? why we keep them. In the interest of fairness, and to put the question to rest once and for all, may I look at those records? They're yours. Just tell me where and when you want them. I suggest this, Miss Moran. But before you go championing any cause that's doubtful at best, ask yourself a key question. Which is? Why? Why would I need to steal from that poor bedraggled souse? Hello. What are you doing here? You keep hanging up on me, so I figured the only way I'll ever get to finish a conversation with you is to do it in person. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, come on, what are you doing here? Well, I heard you were going through a rough period, so I thought you might need some moral support. Uh, we got to talking one morning when you weren't in. Uh, close the door, Miss Lonely Hearts. How did you get away? The case I was working on was postponed, so I thought I'd take an early vacation. Uh -huh. You want to fool around? Yeah. I don't think I can wait till we get home, unless we leave right now. Oh, well, I'll race you to the door. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, it's at the Savoy Hotel in London, see? Now, the elevator door opens, and there's a beautiful naked lady standing there. And the strong says, hey, my wife's got an outfit just like that. <laughs> Only hers got wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Moran. <laughs> Good evening. Hello, Jack. Hey, hi, Dina. I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Paul Cameron. Glad Jack Carter. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Fine. You're a lucky dog. Thank you. <laughs> nice seeing you. Miss Moran, your table is waiting. Nice to meet you. Oh, here we are, Mr. Governor. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Dina, darling. Hello, right, Jim. You have you met uh, my wife, Henny? How do you She's do? She's here courtesy of Rodeo Drive. <laughs> now, we're doing a little celebrating anniversary, you know. Uh, let's see, how many years... Jimmy, if he tells you how many years, I'll kill him. And she will, too. She's... <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Paul Cameron. Oh, hello, Paul. How are you? Fine, thank you. Mr. Backus, I'm a big fan of yours and Mr. Magoo. Mr. Magoo. He <laughs> Who is she gonna ever kill me? <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice meal. Yeah, enjoy your meal. Bon appetit, as they say. Nice meal. Right. Did you do that? Because I had to. They oh. expected of me. I'm impressed. I've 
you've obviously just made love to a very important lady. It's not me, it's the caller. Paul, I know you were upset about me writing a gossip column. But no, 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 I've been thinking about that. It's all handleable if you make the column work for you and not the other way around. Use it as a power base, something to build from. You're a very understanding fella. Besides, I could get used to all this. Dina, darling, what a wonderful surprise. Alma Llewellyn, my fiancé, Paul Cameron. Oh, enchanted, absolutely enchanted. Oh, please sit down, Mr. Cameron. I do hope you understand. I, I wouldn't have called so often if it weren't important. I was out all day. Well, the problem is this. Uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. There's such fierce competition for clients, and I'm a somewhat small firm. And uh, Rodney, he's the gentleman I've been calling you about. He's one of my more important clients. He works all the time. Well, I, uh, I told him you would definitely mention him in your column. I'm sorry, Alma, but the column's going to bed. Please. Dina, please. I, I know I've asked for favors in the past, but this is monumentally important to me. He's one of the few paying clients I have. If I don't deliver for him, others will leave too. Alma, there's nothing I can do. I... I promised him a mention. I'll try to make it up to you next time, all right? You have no relationship with the past, so you've no idea whom you're dismissing so casually. There were three greats in this town. Parsons, Hopper, and Alma Llewellyn. We made the rules. We set the standards. We meted out the punishment. We had the power to make and break careers. Stars, producers, even studio heads were frightened of us. Of what we did and didn't write. You're very smug with your newfound power. Well, believe me, it's only on loan. When you've served your purpose, when they're through with you, You'll be standing right where I am. Was it always this dull around here? Thank you. <laughs> For what? For being here. Send him in. Querido. Buenos dias. Your Spanish is beautiful, Mr. Bach. Do you spend much time in Spain or Mexico? Oh, my, my, no. It's just an affectation, like reading the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm delighted we have this chance to visit, and may I say, the quality of your column continues to be superlativo. Gracias. Unfortunate your work isn't seen in more newspapers. I'd like to think of it as their loss. Perhaps we can rectify that. Really? We represent a rather lengthy list of desirable commodities. We're prepared to let you have them on an exclusive basis. I heard that song when I first arrived from your associate, Mr. Kaplan. <laughs> but not sung like this. Every one of our clients will be made available to you exclusively, for a minimum of two months. For purely self-serving reasons, I assure you. We're having a bit of a tip with a few of the more established columnists. They're not giving our clients the preferential treatment we believe they deserve. After all, 
how can I charge exorbitant fees if my clients don't get the very best? We build you up, and we increase your circulation, and it keeps everybody honest. That's the way they did it in the old studio days. I've been hearing a lot about the old days lately. It was quite effective. If a Bogart or a Cagney was acting up, they'd just trot out a John Garfield. And if a Garfield started to complain, they'd haul in a Dane Clark. And who do you have waiting in the wings for me? Hmm. Actually, we've created a monster. Because once you've grown in stature and in power with our help, you'll no longer need our help. There. All my cards on the table. Nothing up my sleeves. A simple, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back proposition. <sighs> what do you say? Come, come, Carito, I'm offering to make you competitive and more. All right. We'll try it for a while. Congratulations. You are now a full-fledged citizen of Hollywood. Nice to see you. Glad you could come. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Glad you could come. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Looking lovely. Good to see you. How are you? Dina, delighted you could make it. How are you? Marques, this is my fiancé, Paul Cameron. Hello, Paul. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. I've decided to uh, get my feet wet and enter the primer. I'm going to announce it tonight, and you're going to be the first to know. That's very kind. Now, since I'm exiting the agency business, I shall leave you with this observation. All the sincerity in Hollywood can be put into a gnat's navel with room left over for an agent's heart. <laughs> well, I tell you, I don't know much about being an agent. I've only been in town for a few days. Well, I don't know much about it either. That's why I'm going into politics. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. What do you do, Paul? Uh, I'm a lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, Dina Moran. Hi, how do you do? My name is Rip Taylor. How do you do? I'm in the show tonight. <laughs> I have a little hot flash for you. <laughs> I've been having them all day. <laughs> little humor, you know. I, I have a little item for your column, if you don't mind, a little tidbit. There's no truth to the rumor that I am wearing a duvet. It's a full wig. <laughs> Could you die? <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Taylor. And I'm looking forward to your show tonight. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Goodbye, Dina. You're cute. <laughs> I mean, there's not much time before you D.I.E. And I just want you to remember these last few days as long as you live. Well, there's one. Let's see. George, I'll come right on this is from that drugger. Come on in. You know, I'm fat I'm watching a ghost story. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think this guy's gonna make it. You want a drink? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, whatever you're having. Well, we're gonna figure out... My third husband introduced me to these. Bought the surprise. Have you ever seen these The surprise is I'm still standing. Well, we're gonna see it. We, Henry Here. Jim. George, I know what it must have looked like out there. Mark Case and I standing around laughing together. All very chummy. You don't have to explain. He told a joke. I was laughing at the joke he told. No problem. Look, Georgia, I did everything I could. I didn't promise miracles. I asked questions. I pursued leads. I even investigated on my own time. And I came out exactly like you did. I can't prove a thing. Pictures were a lot more fun than those days. To watch and to make. Kipper's a dog. Why would a man in Case's position need to steal money from you or anyone else? Yeah, Maybe he's hair. a crook. That doesn't make sense. Well, Look, honey, I've been here a lot longer than Hollywood Boulevard. And I know how it works. You go with the power. I did that a few times myself. I don't follow. Mark Case is a very important man. He can do a lot for you, or to you. Didn't want to get on the wrong side of him. It's not like that. I didn't want to get on the wrong side of him, but he had his hand in my purse. I did everything I could. Then don't worry about it. I'm not. You better get back to your table. 
I gotta prepare for my number. That's what I like about performing. The preparing. Well, go on, you'll miss that rubber chicken they're serving for dinner. I did everything I could. I know you did. I really know you did. So long, honey. No hard feelings. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what about Henry? Well, don't worry about him. I'll, I'll take care of him. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Georgia O'Handler. Try to think that love's not around. Somebody at the door. Who is it? I don't know. I'll check. Mm. Who is it? Marty Kaplan. It's important. Okay, one second. Come on in, Marty. Good morning. George is dead. Oh, my God. OD'd on booze and pills. They're not sure if it was an accident or deliberate. There wasn't any note. So maybe she just got so sauced, she lost count of how many reds she popped. I can't believe it. I wish it were the old days. We could say she died of a heart attack, surrounded by her loving family, instead of in the toilet of some cheap motel.
You're getting this first. Part of our commitment to you. Wonderful. A thousand percent better than the last time I saw the dear corroded thing. And such a gigantic turnout. I had no idea how beloved the old witch was. That presents an idea. What about a special on her life, Mark? You know, clips from her movies, uh, TV shows, um, interviews with some of her former co-stars saying, how much they loved the old bag, and how talented they thought she was. I bet you can make a network deal in two minutes. That's the thought, Ivan. We wouldn't want to do anything to commercialize George's death and turn it into a financial circus. Why not? Just wouldn't. But something dignified. A tribute befitting her great talent. That's something her fans would like. Don't you agree, Dina? Absolutely. And don't forget the gold fillings in her teeth. Paul, how about a few sets of tennis before lunch? Sure. You'll find everything you need down in the cabana. I haven't shown where it is. I like your young man. We have a lot in common. I hope not. Oh, come on, relax, Dina. I know how upset you are, but... Try to enjoy the sensation of being alive. See what you can do to help her. Okay. Hey, hey, where are you going? To say goodbye to Georgia, in my own way. Call you back. This is getting to be a very unhappy habit. Something wrong with my eulogy on George O'Hanlon? No, the eulogy's fine. It's the rest of the column that's a disaster. You spend most of it defending Mark Case against rumors I haven't heard. Well, maybe you don't go to the right funerals. Is this the hot, juicy story you've been working on? That's the one. Oh, now, you're fishing with that column, Dina. Alan, you can't steal that much money without someone knowing something. Forget it. Georgia O'Hanlon is dead. Whether it is an accident or not is not the point. The point is she is dead because of that man. Now, look, I got 50 calls this morning from 50 very important people. And they all wanted to know what we were trying to accomplish by slandering Mark Case. Now, one of those callers happened to be Mr. Irwin C. Roper, whose name appears on our paychecks. Seems he and Case are golf buddies, and he was very upset by your column. Well, what about George's death? Was he upset by that? Look, I have a chance to head this office permanently. And not you or anybody else up to and including my grandmother's gonna knock me loose. So, from here on in, unless you have attributable quotes, nothing about Mark Case, good, bad, or indifferent, goes into your column. Oh, stick to sex, Dina. It's what people are really interested in. Enjoy it. Hello, Jimmy. Uh, Miss Moran, I'm sorry. About what? The gentleman you were going to interview, he called with his regrets. He canceled? With regrets. Well, it isn't the first time I've had to eat alone. Oh, I didn't think you were going to eat by yourself. I gave the table away. I'm sorry. Oh, that's 
no problem. You can just find me another one. I'm afraid that's impossible. They're all ahead of you. Look, if you wouldn't mind waiting, I'll see what I can do. But please understand, Miss Moran, I can't promise anything. Oh, I understand, Jimmy. Vodka martini on the rocks, please. Welcome to the North Pole, dear. Alma. I read your column. Naughty, naughty. Why would Jimmy care what I write about Mark Case? I'm sure he doesn't, but other people do. And it could be very bad for business if Jimmy was seen showing you anything more than indifference. I think it's time we had that lunch you were talking about. Sorry, dear. Even I can't afford to be seen with you. Tell me, Alma. How's the public relations business? Difficult getting space for your clients? Depends on the client. I've been working pretty hard lately. I love a vacation. But that means I need someone to take my place on the paper for a while. Well, that, uh, that could present a problem. Now, don't laugh. I just got a wild idea. Would you possibly write a few columns for me? That's terribly generous, dear. How could I possibly repay you? There must be a great deal of interesting things to learn about Mark Case. How long will you be gone, dear? Two or three columns? You look terribly tired. I really think you ought to take at least two weeks off. Alma, how could I possibly justify that length of time? By knowing that Mark Case is, uh, as the kids say, Tap City. How could he be broke? He owns one of the biggest talent agencies in the business. But the money goes out faster than it comes in. Where does it go? Seed money, dear. What's he planting? A political career. I need that quote, Alma. into my column. <laughs> Old age isn't very much, dear, but it's all I have. And I'd like to spend it in relative peace. Who's been teaching you? Show me the man. I'd like to okay, shake now his stay hand. With him. Stay with him. Ooh, what you do? You never done, you never done, you never done it like that. Ooh, what you're doing? Yeah, what you're doing? Ah, what you're doing? You never done it, you never done it, you never done it like that. Ooh, what you're doing? Yeah, what you're doing? Look what you're doing. You never done it like that. All right, let's take five, guys. All right, take a book. Who's that? That's one of my favorite songs. How'd you get past the security people? Wit, charm, and a $20 bill. I didn't think people still did that. Next time, I'll try to be more inventive. Well, it's a shame you had to pay for something you can see for free on the tube. Did you read my column today? I never read on an empty stomach. Phil, let's make this, Mother. All right, right after the crew gets its break. Looks like we have a little time to talk. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got to rest the voice. Blink once for yes, twice for no. Hey, I don't have anything to say to you. 
That column was garbage. I thought you didn't read it. I smelled it. In fact, it's smelling up the whole town. And if I were Case, I'd sue. Then you don't think that the rumors about him stealing money from George are true? I think it's something you pulled out of a hat. How's the show going, buddy? Excuse me, I'm not up to an interview. I understand you're $200,000 over budget. Where did you hear that? Your company's paying for this special, isn't it? That's part of my deal with the network, yeah. And Mark Case is a partner in that company, 50-50. So? He's also the head of the agency that represents you. Some might call that a conflict of interest. Mark's only interest is in my career and what's best for me. Did he ever ask you to contribute to his political campaign? Not one penny. Did your company ever contribute to his campaign? Politics isn't my bag. Passionate non-involvement's more my thing. Well, is it possible that your company made a contribution that you didn't know about? Yeah. Keep an eye on that budget, buddy. It could prove to be very illuminating. You print one word of that garbage, and I'll sue, you understand? You'll spend the rest of your workless life in court. That's a promise. From my lips to God's ear. OK, guys, let's get back to work. OK, let's do one for the camera, buddy. Hold on, Mrs. Solomon. I'll see if she's in. There's an edgy Solomon on the line. Who? He's calling long distance, Pittsburgh. Hold it. Older calls. Get his number and tell him that I will get back to him. Okay. Bright, very bright writing that column. I'm beginning to discover that. You know, the bottoms dropped out of the gossip business. Actors don't want to talk about themselves. Studios don't want their pictures screened. And performers don't want their acts reviewed. Suddenly, I am living in a town full of recluses. How can one man control all those people? Case controls a bushel full of stars, and stars control this business. So no one wants to offend Mr. Case and risk losing out on one of his clients. Pussycat, it could mean the difference between a $50 million gross and a 50 megaton bomb. A lot of good it's gonna do me. But I finally know why he stole that money. Why? That political campaign? His financial backing is practically nothing. He's footing all the bills himself. So? So, all those testimonial dinners in his honor up and down the state, he paid for them. Prove it. Prove Not it. one single solitary person bought a ticket. And they were all distributed through your office, weren't they, Marty? How'd you find out? I just got off the phone with the party treasurer. Mark Case is trying to turn himself into a statewide figure overnight. And that runs into heavy dollars. Are you going to put that in your column? I might. Who's your source? Not loose lips the treasurer. He's not going to get involved. What Case did wasn't illegal, just immoral. And in politics, that's a misdemeanor. Well, there's another possibility, Marty. Yeah? You. Can I quote you on those free tickets? Let me ask you a question. Are you crazy? Anyone stupid enough to be quoted in your column loses his place in line for good. Just a thought. Dina, talk to the man. I don't mean to go in waving a white flag. Just don't go in yelling charge. Hear what he has to say. Meet him halfway. You mean forget Georgia? I don't want to see them chew you up. Believe it or not, pussycat, I care what happens to you. All right, Marty. I'll talk to the man. So I said, keep your dancing pig. <laughs> Carito! Dina! I was delighted when Marty indicated you wanted to clear the air. Please sit down. What would you like to drink? Vodka martini with a twist, please. Not that it needs to be said, but we all love Georgia. She was a wonderful human being and a tremendous talent. Ivan, I think we'd all be more comfortable if we put Georgia to rest. 
once and for all. Don't you agree, Dina? Yes. It was a tragic loss. But I think that we do a disservice to ourselves and to those who care about us if we dwell on it. Absolutely. Get beyond it. That's the cure. The future. That's what we should concentrate on. All those good things ahead of us. Of course. And that unfortunate foul up with the interviews, it'll all be straightened out. Your Paul, he seems pretty bright. I'd like to help him realize his potential. I'm afraid you gentlemen got the message garbled. I'm here to clear the air, not jump back on the bandwagon. I know I'm part of what happened to Georgia. I told her I'd done everything I could to prove you were a thief. I may have believed that at the time, but now I know it wasn't true. Just like I knew it wasn't a coincidence that you came to me right after my visit to Mr. Case. But you took what I offered, didn't you, Theory? I mean, your greedy little fingers grabbed every interview I sent you. I allowed myself to be bought off. And now? We can all pay for what happened to Georgia. You pay. That's right. I forgot. You're a little short of cash. It takes a lot of capital to run a place like this, along with a political campaign. Maybe Buddy Harwin or one of your other clients can carry you for a while, if they're not already. I wonder if they think they'll ever end up like George. That's enough, Miss Moran. I may play the screamer because it amuses me, but don't you confuse theatrics with reality. This is theatrics, and this is reality. The reality is you function as long as we allow you to function. Otherwise, you don't exist. You print one word of that filth, and I'll tear your lungs out. What's the matter, officer? You went through a stop sign. I don't think so. Can I see your driver's license, please? Ah, take it out of the plastic case, please. Would you step out of the car? What for? Out of the car, please. Step on over the curb. Well, I can't say for sure till we run it through the lab, but uh, from the look of it, I'd say you're holding some coke, lady.
Let's get you home, okay? Come on. You want to talk about it? He had it planted in my car. Or else he owns the cop that found it. Who owns the cop? Case. Dina. I know how it sounds. Well, then why even say it? Because he is warning me. Stop bringing up George O'Hanlon. You mean he's done all this in retaliation for your column? What it might uncover. Oh. What has it uncovered? Nothing. Dina, that column will be forgotten tomorrow. Now, I don't want to put down what you do for a living, but Mark Case does not have to go through anything this elaborate. Meaning what? That I am paranoid or I actually had cocaine? Mm -hmm. I mean, why did I spend the better part of my night in jail, Paul? I don't know how you wound up where you did. Because I know that he is systematically stealing from his clients and that Georgia O'Hanlon was the tip of the iceberg. All right, okay, relax, relax. I know it sounds crazy. Yes, it does. Only look at me. I am shaking all over and I am terrified because of a column I wrote. Paul, I don't want to have to go through that again. Well, then I think you have to ask yourself what this has to do with us. How much do you want a dead alcoholic to interfere with our lives? Well, I was going to tell you at dinner tonight, but now it doesn't seem like such a hot idea. What? I may have a job out here. That's wonderful. You may not think so when you hear who offered it. Mark Case wants me to join his talent agency. Oh. Legal department, handling contracts and things like that. Don't you see what he is trying to do? Yeah, give a bright young lawyer an opportunity no. to... He is trying to buy me off through you. There are people in this town who feel I have something to offer. Who see me as more than Dina Moran's boyfriend. Paul, that is not what I was trying to imply. I, I, I was... Look, this is a chance for us to have something more than a fold-out bed and plastic dishes. If I can let George O'Hanlon rest in peace. Let's sleep on it. Not yet. If I'm going to let Georgia rest in peace, I'd better rewrite that column before it goes out in the morning. That's what you want. Company? No, I'll grab a cab. I'll be home in a couple of hours. Okay.
It's a little early for the mail. What are you doing here? I was taking a nap on a receptionist's couch. You woke me up. Why were you sleeping out there? Your office was locked. You look awful. Prison life obviously doesn't agree with you. How did you know about that? By morning, it'll be the best kept secret in Hollywood. I went down to bail you out, but the boyfriend beat me to it. So I came here. To sleep? First, I bumped into someone who was waiting to see you. A fellow named Edgy Solomon. Edgy Solomon. I know that name. He's been trying to reach me from... Pittsburgh. That's he, right. He was sorry he couldn't stay, but he had a plane to catch to Tokyo. He'll be gone on tour for eight months. But he left you that. A W-2 form? He read your column on Georgia. Thought maybe you could help him. Well, how could I help him? According to that W-2 form, Edgy Solomon earned $25,000 on Georgia's European tour. So? He was playing with the Pittsburgh Symphony at the time, in Pittsburgh. He's in the string section. He called the address on the W-2, and guess who he spoke to? Who? Mark Case. Case said it was a computer screw-up, not to worry about it, he'd take care of it. Only he didn't. And now, unless Edgy pays taxes on that money, the IRS is going to take away his Buick. That's how he did it. Wrote checks to non-existent employees and then cashed them in. And on the books, it looked like a legitimate expense. Where was Mr. Solomon when I had the courage to write that column? Don't tell me that the journalist from Chicago is given up on the showbiz expose of the year. I am a failure, Marty. No, I'm worse than that. I'm incompetent. I'm too frightened to play by my rules, and I can't play by theirs. I thought that might make you feel a little braver. I could have sent you that in a plain brown wrapper. Why let me see it at all? It would have been smarter and a lot safer just to get rid of it. You still want a quote on Case buying out his testimonial dinners? What changed your mind? You. I thought I was the guy who would cross any line if the payoff was big enough. But when he set you up on that coke bust, I just couldn't step across that one. You are not the last person in the world I expected this from. But close. Listen. Just because you tell the truth, that doesn't mean you're going to get a standing ovation. There's a lot of people in this town. They don't want their boats rocked. You just may be the messenger who gets her head lopped off. There's only one way to find out. Hollywood agent steals from the stars. Marty? I think I'm going to like being a gossip columnist after all. It might not be a bad day. Let's go. Stay tuned as Robert Hayes and Pam Dauber preview our next Operation Primetime movie, The Girl, The Gold Watch, and Everything. <laughs>